हेलो एवरीवन हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप दैट ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग अमेजिंगली ग्रेट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेलकम टू दिस सेशन सो वी आर ऑन लेक्चर नंबर टू ऑफ स्ट्रेट लाइन सो इन टूडे सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स व्हिच आर कमिंग इन बोर्ड्स एग्जामिनेशन एज वेल एज फॉर जे एग्जामिनेशन राइट सो इन दिस सेशन टूडे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट एरिया ऑफ ए ट्राइंगल एंड कोलिनियरिटी ऑफ पॉइंट कंडीशन फॉर कोलिनियरिटी ऑफ पॉइंट एंड देन आफ्टर दैट विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट लोकस विच इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन एंटायर कॉर्डिनेट जोमेट्री एज वेल एज इन कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर दिस टर्म अगेन कम्स अप इन कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर सो देर आर सम लोकस क्वेश्चन एंड वी आर गोइंग टू यू नो हैव द फील ऑफ दिस एंटायर टॉपिक वॉट इज लोकस हाउ डू वी फाइंड लोकस वॉट डज इट रिप्रेजेंट एंड एवरीथिंग अबाउट दैट सो without any further delay let's get started for this session okay by the way there was no delay but still just to say now uh, first of all area of a triangle and collinearity of points suppose uh, three vertices are given x1 comma y1 x2 comma y2 x3 comma y3 if the vertices of a triangle is given we can find the area of the triangle which is half of these two lines you see these two lines represent modulus what does modulus does modulus makes things positive suppose if thing if this thing comes negative suppose this value comes minus 3 so modulus will do what it will make it plus 3 it will make it positive so these lines are modulus so modulus of determinant of x1 y1 x2 y2 plus determinant of x2 y2 x3 y3 plus determinant of x3 y3 again x1 y1 so which is a very very simple formula to calculate the area of triangle and further we can extend this formula to polygons as well but first of all let's have some command over this formula on area of a triangle okay i hope all of you know how to calculate the value of a determinant simple cross multiplication x1 y2 minus y1 x2 x1 y2 minus y1 x2 right okay y1 x2 then simply x2 y3 minus y2 x3 okay x2 y3 minus y2 x3 then x3 y1 minus okay so this is how we calculate the value of a determinant so i hope this is very simple to you just half times modulus of there are three determinants over here some of these three determinants okay and the first determinant x1 y1 x2 y2 x2 y2 x3 y3 x3 y3 x1 y1 again okay as simple as that now let's have a look so in general area of a n sided polygon if an n sided polygon is given we can extend this formula starting with the vertex x1 y1 then x2 y2 then x2 y2 x3 y3 then x3 y3 and so on so as you can see this is repeated over here okay and then again this cycle ends with x1 y1 it starts with the coordinate it ends with the same coordinate this is the only thing you need to be aware about okay let's practice some questions on it or we can also write the area of the triangle in this format if you are comfortable with 3 cross 3 determinant this is also the formula of a area of a triangle magnitude of half times x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 and in one of the row put one simply okay so if we are using 3 cross 3 determinant this is a very good way now condition of collinearity what do we mean by collinearity collinearity means that the points are on the same straight line okay and whenever we are talking about collinearity see two points are always collinear if i'm talking about only two points they are always collinear because from two points a straight line can be passed right but if there are more than two points now comes the question of collinearity whether these three points are collinear or not whether they are on the same line or not so the idea behind this is that if they are on the same line if they are on the same line then the area of the triangle formed by these three points let's call them x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 okay area of the triangle formed by these three points will be what zero this area of the triangle will be zero because they are not making any triangle they are collinear so area of the triangle formed by these three points will be zero if they are collinear so we know how to get the area of the triangle just equate it to zero this is the condition for collinearity of three points okay and there is another way which you will understand later on when we will be equipped with the concept of slope 
okay if the slope of ab and the slope of bc is same then also we can say that yes these three points are collinear but first of all let's practice on this method so very basic question find the area of the triangle whose vertices are this so half times uh, determinant of modulus of there are three determinants uh, determinant 1 determinant 2 determinant 3 there are three determinants right and in the first determinant write 3 2 and 5 minus 2 x1 y1 x2 y2 then again repeating with this x2 y2 then x3 y3 1 minus 3 then starting with x3 y3 1 minus 3 and ending with x1 y1 again ending with 3 2 again so as simple as that okay now if you calculate this area so half times modulus of this is minus 6 minus 6 minus 10 okay which is minus 16 i hope all of you understand how to calculate the value of a 2 cross 2 determinant simple cross multiplier multiplication minus 2 times 3 that is minus 6 minus 2 times 5 which is 10 so minus 6 minus 10 that will be minus 16 similar way 5 times minus 3 which is minus 15 and what is the product of this minus 2 so minus 15 minus of minus 2 which is plus 2 so minus 15 plus 2 will be minus 13 and then here 2 minus of minus 9 okay so 2 plus 9 which is 2 plus 9 that will be 11 or modulus of this so taking the sum of this minus 16 minus 13 that will be minus 29 minus 29 plus 11 okay which is minus 18 modulus of minus 18 that will be plus 18 so here is the rule of modulus that suppose this value this entire calculation the sum of these three determinants comes out to be negative suppose this comes out to be negative then what does modulus does modulus makes is positive basically magnitude of the sum of these three determinants by 2 magnitude of sum of these three determinants divided by 2 so minus of minus 18 18 by 2 that will be 9 so this is our answer this is the area of a triangle okay so this is one of the way another way can go from 3 cross 3 determinant if you are comfortable with that and there is also one more way which is a trick sort of trick okay so you can also use this trick that half times magnitude of whether call it magnitude or call it determinant magnitude of just simply write these vertices 3 2 5 minus 2 1 minus 3 and then again repeat the first one whatever you are writing the first one we are starting with 3 comma 2 okay then end it again with 3 comma 2 and simple cross multiplication that multiply these parts this into this this into this this into this write that what does it come comes it comes half times magnitude of okay 3 times minus 2 which is minus 6 5 times minus 3 which is minus 15 uh, 1 times 2 which is plus 2 okay then then minus okay minus what you are go re going to repeat minus this into this this into this this into this okay going this way and then again going back okay and you are subtracting this part so 3 times minus 3 which is what minus 9 3 times minus 3 which is nine, minus 9 1 times minus 2 which is minus 2 and 5 times 2 which is 10 okay so what does it come minus 6 minus 15 it is minus 21 minus 21 plus 2 which is minus 19 so half times minus 19 minus half times magnitude of minus 19 right this is minus 19 minus what minus what uh, this is minus 11 plus 10 which is minus 1 so minus of minus 1 so minus 19 plus 1 which is minus 18 so half times magnitude of minus 18 what is the magnitude of minus 18 that will be plus 18 again so 18 by 2 which is 9 that's our answer so this is another way of finding area of triangle or area of any polygon just start with one vertex write all the vertices and then again repeat the first one 
then multiply this way then go back okay simon go back right the similar way now if we apply the same trick over here uh, area of this quadrilateral okay there are four vertices in a quadrilateral so half times magnitude of just simply start with 3 comma 2 3 2 then 5 minus 2 then 1 minus 3 then minus 4 minus 1 and then again repeat the first one 3 2 okay as simple as that 3 comma 2 5 comma minus 2 1 comma minus 3 minus 4 comma minus 1 and then again repeat the first one and then multiply it in this way this into this this into this this into this this into this okay first of all write that and then we will go back okay so don't worry so half times magnitude of of in place of magnitude i am simply writing modulus half times modulus of 3 into minus 2 which is minus 6 okay 5 into minus 3 which is minus 15 1 into minus 1 which is minus 1 and minus 4 into 2 which is minus 8 minus now we are going back 3 into minus 1 which is minus 3 okay minus 4 into minus 3 minus 4 into minus 3 that will be plus 12 okay then 1 into minus 2 which is going to be minus 2 and 5 into 2 which is going to be plus 10 and that's modulus simply calculate this you will get the area of the quadrilateral so instead of writing determinant this is another way another trick to calculate the area of any quadrilateral or any polygon if we just know the vertices we know the area that's it okay so it comes out to be half times modulus of minus 15 minus 6 see minus 8 minus 6 that will be minus 14 minus 1 minus 15 this all comes out to be minus 30 minus of here we have 12 minus 2 plus 10 10 plus 10 20 20 minus 3 17 okay so minus 30 minus 17 so they are going to get added up because both of these terms are negative so minus 30 minus 17 that will be minus 47 and because there is a modulus right half times modulus of minus 47 and what does modulus do it makes it positive that's it okay so there should be a modulus in all of your life whenever you feel negative just apply modulus okay that will make things positive now find the value of k if uh, these three points are collinear so again we are going to apply the similar way over here that if these three points are collinear the area of the triangle formed by these three points will be what that will be zero so area of the triangle is zero that's the idea we are going to apply so half times what is the area uh, write the coordinates k plus one two minus k one minus k minus k two plus k and here i have three minus k and then again repeat the first one which is k plus one two minus k okay now simply multiply it this way first of all and then we are going to go back so half times this is equal to half times modulus of right modulus of what if i multi multiply k plus 1 with minus k so that will be minus k square minus k right k plus 1 into minus k that will be this 1 minus k into 3 minus k will be what uh, you can directly write 1 into 3 that is 3 plus k square uh, minus 3k minus k okay so that will be 3 plus k square uh, minus 3k minus k which is minus 4k okay so 3 plus k square minus 4k this is the product of 1 minus k into 3 minus k you can do that calculation on your own then the product of 2 plus k and 2 minus k that will be 4 minus k square right now we are going back okay simon go back now so k plus 1 times 3 minus k what will be their product k plus 1 times 3 minus k uh, their product will be k into minus k minus k square k into minus k minus k square and then we get plus 3 right 
एंड देन प्लस थ्री देन के इन टू थ्री थ्री के माइनस के थ्री के माइनस के दैट विल बी प्लस टू के दिस विल बी द प्रोडक्ट ओके यू कैन टेक यू टाइम टू डू द प्रोडक्ट सपोज इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डू द प्रोडक्ट के प्लस वन इंटू थ्री माइनस के ओके हाउ विल यू डू दैट के इंटू थ्री विच इज थ्री के के इंटू माइनस के विच इज माइनस के स्क्वायर वन इंटू थ्री दैट इज प्लस थ्री वन इंटू माइनस के दैट इज माइनस के राइट सो हियर वी हैव थ्री के माइनस के विच इज टू के माइनस के स्क्वायर प्लस थ्री विच आई डन डायरेक्टली ओके टू के प्लस थ्री माइनस के स्क्वायर विच आई डन वर्बली बेसिकली एंड यू विल ऑल्सो कम टू दैट आफ्टर सम प्रैक्टिस इफ यू डू द वर्बल मल्टीप्लीकेशन यू विल गेट बेटर एट दैट ओके सो टू प्लस के मल्टीप्लाइड बाई माइनस के विच विल बी माइनस टू के माइनस के स्क्वायर विच विल बी माइनस टू के माइनस के स्क्वायर टू इंटू माइनस के माइनस टू के के इंटू माइनस के दैट इज माइनस के स्क्वायर राइट देन मल्टीप्लाई दिस विद दिस वन माइनस के इंटू टू माइनस के दिस विल बी वॉट सो वन इंटू टू दे प्रोडक्ट विल बी प्लस टू एंड माइनस टू के माइनस के देर प्रोडक्ट विल बी माइनस थ्री के माइनस के इंटू माइनस के देर प्रोडक्ट विल बी प्लस के स्क्वायर ओके मॉड्यूलर्स ऑफ दिस सो दिस इज द एरिया ऑफ द ट्राइंगल फॉर्म बाई दीज थ्री पॉइंट and what do we have to do we have to equate this entire thing to zero because if they are collinear if they are collinear then this will be zero right area of the triangle will be zero so if we calculate this minus k square plus k square will get cancelled out over here then i have minus k square okay minus k square minus 4k minus k which is minus 5k and plus 3 plus 4 which is plus 7 right then minus uh, here also this minus k square and plus k square gets cancelled out so i have minus k square only over here okay then 2k minus 2k will also get cancelled out i have only minus 3k term over here then 3 plus 2 that will be 5 3 plus 2 will be 5 now subtract these so if you subtract minus k square minus k square their subtraction these two will get cancelled out here i have minus 5k and here i have plus 3k right minus of minus that will be plus so minus 5k plus 3k that will be minus 2k so half times modulus of minus 2k okay and then 7 minus 5 7 minus 5 will be plus 2 so this comes out to be the area of the triangle we want to equate it to zero we want this thing to be zero then only these three points will be collinear right so minus 2k plus 2 is zero Minus two k plus two is zero. Hence, the value of k is what the value of k is one. So you can do these type of question like this, but there is another bet better way to form the condition of collinearity, and that way comes from the slope. So once we will be equipped with the concept of slope, we'll be able to do these type of questions with much much less calculations. Okay, everyone. Now. moving ahead to the next point the next topic which is the hero of this session and the name of this topic tan 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 locus what do we mean by locus it is the path or curve traced by a moving point satisfying a given condition every path has an equation right in maths basically in maths or in world every path has an equation like in world we have coordinates right there is a coordinate to your home right or uh, there is a locus so if we have a coordinate if we have a uh, coordinate geometry what do we mean by geomet coordinate geometry here we are studying about 2d coordinate geometry there is an x axis there is an y axis and on this entire plane every point has an address like your home has an address okay your school has an address okay so that coordinate every point can be represented by a coordinate right every point can be represented by a coordinate okay now every path on this suppose i make this path now this what is this path this there are basically infinite coordinates which are connected this is a path circular path this is a path parabolic path right there are lots of path and all of these are what 2d all of these are in 2d not in 3d okay so every path has an equation 
देर आर सेट ऑफ कॉर्डिनेट एवरी पाथ हैज एन इक्वेशन वॉट डू वी मीन बाई इक्वेशन वॉट इज एन इक्वेशन so equations gives you every coordinate on this path suppose if i have the equation of this circle if i have the equation of this circle i know the coordinate of each and every point which is on the circle because if a point satisfies the equation of the circle that lies on it if a point satisfies the equation of a parabola that point will lie on the equation of parabola in the similar way if there is a point which is satisfying a equation of straight line it will lie on that straight line so what is locus locus is simply a path okay locus is simply a path and every path has some constraint like circular path circular path has some constraint what is the constraint about a circle what is the constraint about a circle okay there is a property of a circle there is a center of a circle right if there is a circle there must be a center to it and what is the property of this path the property of this path is that every point is equidistant every point is equidistant whether i talk about this point this point this point every point is equidistant that is at equal distance from the center of this circle this is the constraint this is the constraint of this path and using this property we can find the locus what do we mean by locus locus means an equation suppose if i ask you what is the locus of this circle if i ask you what is the locus of this circle so basically i am asking you about the equation of this circle okay so locus of a point which moves such that it remains at a distance of one unit from the origin origin is a point and if i want every point to be at a one unit distance from the origin so locus of that path is again going to be a what that is going to be a circle so how do we find a locus how do we get that path how do we get the equation of that path this is entire coordinate geometry this is just the start this is just a trailer of coordinate geometry later on in straight line circle conic section how do we what is the constraint that a parabola has what is the constraint that an ellipse has hyperbola so we'll be learning about all of them later on later on okay that will take time there are lots of things we can't you know give all the knowledge in one session but till that time till we study straight line circle and conic section what i want from you guys that you guys be consistent okay be consistent just learn little bit every single day and then just keep learning and later on till the time we will finish finish conic section till that time you will have a good command over this entire coordinate geometry which is a very very important okay portion and very big portion of entire iitj and uh, cbsc and icsc whatever boards you are from whether maharashtra board or any board wherever you are coordinate geometry comes in your examination and it's a very very interesting chapter it's a very interesting topic entire coordinate geometry is very very interesting you just have to you know get into the depth of that it's not just about finding equation it's about what does that mean okay we'll be talking about everything in depth okay so now the next okay important thing is agli kaam ki baat ye hai ki locus nikale kaise how do we get the equation of a locus okay so there are some Uh, rules there are some steps to find the equation of a locus so we are generally interested in the equation of a locus of a point steps to find equation of a locus so the first step is assume the coordinate of the point whose locus is to be found to be h comma k okay suppose they are asking find the locus of a point which is at a fixed distance from origin there is an origin find the locus of a point which is at a fixed distance from the origin so i am going to consider the point whose locus we want to find i will consider that point as h comma k you can also consider that point to be x comma y that will also work okay but to avoid the confusions okay we just consider the point to be what h comma k now the next step is write the given condition involving h and k whatever condition you can think of or they will be given in the equation 
that it should be at a constant distance from a point okay and there are different different types of question different different types of conditions you are going to see so apply the given conditions in the questions when you apply those conditions if there's an uh, if there's a variable which you have assumed from your side try to eliminate that variable okay you have to eliminate that variable and create an equation in terms of h and k if you have created an equation in terms of h and k you got your lo locus in the end the final step is just a makeup step okay just replace h by x and k by y in the end simply replace h comma k with x comma y so you get an equation in terms of x and y and that is our required locus so from the start also we could have considered the coordinate to be x comma y that also works okay that also works if from the start we consider the coordinate to be x comma y but just to avoid the confusion right find the locus of a point p which moves us that it remains equidistant from two points okay so the condition is given in the equation there's a point 0 comma 0 and there's a point b 4 comma 0 we are looking to find the locus of a point which is equidistance which is at equal distance from these two points so suppose this is the point i want to find locus of locus means path there is not just a single point which is satisfying this condition on this entire plane there is not just a single point there are infinite points this point is also satisfying this point is also satisfying this point is also uh, equidistant from these two points this point is also equidistant from these two points so there are basically infinite points and if we join all of these points the set of all these points will produce a path and we are looking to find the equation of this path so simply consider the coordinate to be x comma y or you can consider the coordinate to be h comma k and then just in the end replace by x comma y okay so if i consider the coordinate to be h comma k i will apply the uh, required condition let's call this point p so distance between a and p a p is equal to distance between p and b these two things are equal so the distance between a p is under root of what under root of difference of x coordinate square h square and difference of y coordinate square k square and distance between point p and point b is h minus 4 square plus k minus 0 square this is the distance between p and b difference of x coordinate square plus difference of y coordinate k minus 0 it's square now just simply do the squaring on both sides so in the left hand side we get h square plus k square in the right hand side we are getting h square minus 8h plus 16 plus k square okay k square gets cancelled out from both the sides k square k square gets cancelled out uh, h square also gets cancelled out from both the side so only thing we are getting in the left hand side there is 0 in the right hand side minus 8h plus 16 so 8h is equal to 16 so h is equal to what 2 this is what we are getting from here h is equal to 2 this is the locus we have formed an equation in which there isn't any variable apart from h and k so this is our required equation simply in the end replace h by x so x is equal to 2 this is the locus this is our locus so as i told you what is locus locus is an equation x is equal to 2 is an equation this is the equation of a vertical line x is equal to constant is an equation of what a vertical line because on a vertical line x coordinate is constant on a vertical line you are moving up or down x coordinate only varies when you move left or right so on a vertical line x coordinate is what constant so that is the equation of this vertical line x is equal to 2 is the equation for that now we got the equation we got the answer that's fine apart from that what else did we learn from this question there's a very hidden thing that you must have learned in this question and that hidden thing is that locus of a point which is equidistant from two given points is their perpendicular bisector 
This line is what? X is equal to 2 line is the perpendicular bisector of line segment AB. If I join the line segment AB, their perpendicular bisector is this line. So this is a very important concept that we have learned in this, in this question. Okay. So locus of a point which is equidistant from two given points is what? Their perpendicular bisector. This is the perpendicular bisector. But passing through 2 comma 0, the equation of this line is what? X is equal to 2. Okay, everybody. Find the locus of a point P such that angle APB is equal to 90 degree where the coordinates of A and B are minus A comma 0 and A comma 0. Okay, there's a point A, there's point B. The coordinate of A is minus A comma 0. The coordinate of B is A comma 0. And there is a point P somewhere over here. Just draw a rough diagram first of all. Okay, let's call, call this H comma K. So we want to find the coordinate of point P such that angle APB, this angle is what? 90 degree. This is the condition they have given us. Okay. This angle is what? This angle is 90 degree. This is the condition. Now, what condition can we apply over here? So, we can apply Pythagoras theorem, right? That this is a right angle triangle. This is a right angle triangle. And the condition for a right angle triangle is Pythagoras theorem. That square of AP plus square of PB is equal to AB square. AB is the hypotenuse, right? The side in front of 90 degree, that is the hypotenuse. So, AB is the hypotenuse. So, AP square plus PB square is equal to what? AB square. Now, what is the AP square? AP square will be H minus of minus A square, which is H plus A square. Or if you want, you can in the start consider X comma Y. That will also work so that you don't get confused in the final step. Okay. So if I consider the point P to be X comma Y, then also it will work. We will get the direct equation in terms of X and Y. We don't have to perform the final makeup step in which we replace X, Y, H comma K with X comma Y. Okay. So what is the value for AP square? AP square will be X plus A square plus Y minus zero square, which is Y square. This is the distance formula. Like if I write AP, see what is AP? distance between point A and point P is going to be under root of X minus of minus A square, which is X plus A square plus Y minus zero square, right? This is AP. Now what will be AP square? This under root will go away. That's it. So this is AP square. What is PB square? In the similar way, PB square will be X minus A square plus Y minus zero square, which is Y square. And what is the distance between point A and point B, which we can directly see that's uh, A minus of minus A, 2A will be the distance. Okay, Y coordinate is same for these two points. They are on the same horizontal axis. There's only difference of X coordinate, A minus of minus A, which is 2A, or you can also apply the distance formula, A minus of minus A, which is 2A square. Okay, this is the distance between AB. Now simply, this is our locus. We got the answer. That's it. Okay. In equation in terms of X and Y, that's our answer. There's a variable A. A is not a variable. A is a given thing. Okay. A is given in the equation. It is not any variable. This is our answer for this question, which you can further simplify that X square. And here also we are getting X square, which is two X square. And then we are getting two Y square. Then A square plus A square, which is two A square is equal to in the right hand side we are getting 4a square just cancel out 2 so x square plus y square is equal to a square that's our answer this is the locus of point p now another very important thing which you must have observed in this question that basically okay we got the equation we got the equation but what does this equation will represent is this the equation of what? What is the path of point P? Basically, in what path point P will be moving? So the answer to that question is that point P will be moving in a circular path. Point P will be a moving in a circular path where AB is the diameter of the circle. 
AB is the diameter of the circle. Because diameter of a circle is going to make a right angle at the circumference, right? So this is the point P or point P can be somewhere over here. This is also the right angle or point P can be somewhere over here. This is also right angle because why? Because this is the diameter of that circle. This is the diameter of that circle. AB is the diameter of the circle. Okay. So point P is moving in a circular path. This is the equation of a circle. Now moving ahead. A1, 2 is a fixed point. A variable point B lies on this circle. Find the locus of midpoint of AB. There's a fixed point A1, 2. Okay. There is a, a variable point B lies on this circle. So suppose there's some circle and there's a variable point B which is lying on this circle x square plus y square is equal to 4. We are looking to find the locus of midpoint of AB. What is the locus of midpoint of these two points A and B? So whatever locus we want to find, we are going to consider this point to be H comma K. Not X comma Y if you want to avoid the confusion because there are already X and Y in the picture. So just consider this as H comma K. In the end, we will replace by X, Y and we will get an equation. But first of all, make some condition. What is the condition we can make? The only condition we can make is that P point is the midpoint of point A and point B. P is the midpoint of AB, right? Now we don't have the coordinate of B. B is a moving point. B is a moving point, right? B is a point which is moving on this circle. And as you can imagine, if B moves, A is the fixed point. Just imagine, A is the fixed point, B is the moving point. It is moving. Zzz right if this is moving this entire line segment is moving b goes over here this is the line segment b goes over here this is the line segment so their midpoint is also moving this entire line segment is moving so their midpoint which is p that is also moving and what is the path in which this is moving that is what we are looking to find so first of all, I hope you get the picture, right? This is the picture, everybody, that point B is moving. Uh, so this entire line segment AB is moving. Every point on this line segment is moving. And P is the midpoint of this line segment. And that is also moving. And what is the path in which this point is moving? This is the question. Okay. Now, how do we proceed over here? So we don't know about the coordinate of B, but I can consider the coordinate of B to be alpha comma beta. This is the variable I have introduced that alpha comma beta is the coordinate of point B. Now the relation is that P H comma K because P is the midpoint of A and B. So I'm applying the midpoint formula. Sum of the X coordinate 1 plus alpha by 2 comma sum of the Y coordinate, which is 2 plus beta. 2 plus beta by 2. I'm simply equating the coordinate that this is the coordinate of point P because this point is the midpoint of these two points. So midpoint formula 1 plus alpha by 2 comma 2 plus beta by 2. Okay, everybody. So I'm getting the relation that H is equal to 1 plus alpha by 2 and K is equal to 2 plus beta by 2. But that is not an answer. One important piece of information that we haven't used yet, that information is that alpha comma beta this point B is lying on this circle. So this point is going to satisfy the equation of this circle. So definitely alpha square plus beta square is going to be 4. In place of x put alpha, in place of y put beta. Why? Because point B is on this circle. If a point is on a circle, it will satisfy the equation of this circle. Okay. So alpha square plus beta square is equal to what? 4. So H is equal to 1 plus alpha by 2. H is equal to 1 plus alpha by 2. And K is equal to 2 plus beta by 2. This is what we are getting. Uh, we got an equation, but it is in terms of alpha and beta. We want to produce this equation in terms of H and K. So simply get the value of alpha from this equation. The value of alpha is 2H minus 1. Correct? The value of beta from this equation is 2K minus 2. Now put the value of alpha and beta in this equation and you will get the entire equation in terms of H and K, right? Like in place of alpha, if I put 2H minus 1, so 2H minus 1 square 
plus in place of beta i'm going to put 2k minus 2 so 2k minus 2 square is equal to what 4 this is our answer this is our locus just in the end replace h by x and k by y once we get an equation in terms of h and k just replace this which is 2x minus 1 square plus 2y minus 2 square is equal to 4 just replace h by x and k by y okay so we are getting an equation like this if you take two common from here so two square times or simply just do the expansion or simply you can leave over here whatever you want I, we don't have enough space right now so you can just leave the question over here okay simple this is our equation this is our locus this is our answer for this question now moving ahead so this is a very similar kind of question which I am giving to you as a homework and I want you to comment your answer in the comment section. This is the same equation, very similar type of question to the previous one which we have seen. Okay everybody, now. This is again the similar type of question if A2,1 is a fixed point. Okay. And B is a variable point lying on this curve. Then find the locus of the midpoint of AB. Again, similar type of equation that A is a fixed point 2, 1. And B or B is a point which is lying on this curve. Uh, let me tell you this curve is a parabola. Even if you don't know that, that's okay because that is not going to, you know, matter. We are going to find the locus of the midpoint of AB. Let's consider this point to be P, which is H comma K. Let's call this point as P, H comma K. We want to make an equation in terms of H and K. So again, the similar type of question to the previous one. Let's consider the coordinate of B as alpha comma beta. And because point B is lying on this curve, this is going to satisfy the equation of this curve. So in place of Y, put beta, beta square. In place of X, put alpha, beta square is going to be equal to alpha. If this point lies on this curve, this point is going to satisfy the curve. This is what equation means. Equation means that if this is the equation of this curve, every point is going to satisfy on that curve. Every point is going to satisfy the equation of that curve. Okay. So beta square is going to be alpha. This is the equation we have in terms of beta and alpha. And the relation between h comma k and these points are that h comma k is the midpoint, right? So h comma k is equal to 2 plus alpha by 2, comma 1 plus beta by 2. Okay. Midpoint formula. h comma k 2 plus alpha by 2, comma 1 plus beta by 2. This is going to be h comma k. So the value of alpha from here is 2h minus 2, and the value of beta from here comparing with k so 1 plus beta by 2 over k so beta is equal to 2k minus 1 now simply put the value of alpha and beta in this equation so in place of beta i am going to put 2k minus 1 so this becomes 2k minus 1 square is equal to what alpha alpha is what 2h minus 2 that's our answer just in the end replace k by y so 2y minus 1 square is equal to 2x minus 2. That's our answer. This is the equation. This is the locus of our point P. Simple. This is a very important and standard type of questions. A rod of length L slides with its end on x and y axis. Let's call this x axis, y axis. There is a rod of length L okay this is road of length l which is sliding on the x axis and y axis okay this is the end points of this road okay it is sliding on this find the locus of its midpoint we want to find the locus of its midpoint let's call this midpoint as h comma k okay Let's call the midpoint of this rod to be h comma k. Okay. What information do we have about the rod? Only the length. That length is L. Right. This is the entire information. 
this is the entire information given in the equation that the length of this rod is l and it is just sliding so when it is sliding suppose it moves over here the middle point is moving so this point middle point is a moving point and it will be moving in some path right if this rod slides down this point will be moving in some path like this as you can observe that like this it is going to be moving in the path now what is the equation of this path that's what they are looking for okay now let me call this point as a comma zero let me call this point as zero comma b Okay, these are the endpoints a comma 0 0 comma b now what relation do I have is that at any given point if this length is a if this length is b then a square plus b square is equal to l square a square plus b square is equal to l square this is the equation I have but not the equation I need right this is the equation we have but not we not the equation we need we equa we need an equation in terms of h and k so as h comma k is the midpoint of a comma 0 and 0 comma b so definitely i can say that this point h comma k is going to be sum of the x coordinate which is a plus 0 by 2 comma sum of the y coordinate which is b plus 0 by 2 this is going to be our point h comma k a plus 0 by 2 a by 2 comma b plus 0 by 2 b by 2 so the value of a is going to be what 2h if a by 2 is equal to h a is equal to 2h if b by 2 is equal to k b is equal to what 2k so we get a as 2h b as 2k and just i'm going to simply put the value over here so 2h square a square plus b square 2k square is equal to l square and in the end replace h by x so 2x square plus 2y square is equal to l square which is 4x square plus 4y square is equal to l square that's our answer this is the locus of the midpoint of line segment ab clear so i hope you got the idea of what is the locus how do we get the equation of a locus right now one last question for this session Find the locus of a point whose coordinates are given by x is equal to 2 cos theta and y is equal to 3 sin theta. So coordinates are given in terms of parameter where theta is what parameter where theta is changing. So as theta changes the value of x will change as theta changes the value of y will change. Now locus in terms of x and y is an equation in terms of x and y. So what are the information we have x is equal to 2 cos theta so value of cos theta will be what x by 2 right and another information y is equal to 3 sin theta so what will be the value of sin theta y by 3 right now we know for sure that sin square theta plus cos square theta is going to be 1 so sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to what that is equal to 1 if sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1, put the value of sin theta which is y by 3. So y by 3 square plus cos square theta which is x by 2, x by 2 square is going to be 1. So here we get an equation which is y square by 9 plus x square by 4 is equal to 1. This is our answer for this equation. This is the equation, this is the locus. Okay, this is the path and this is the elliptical path just a suspense later on in the conic section you will learn that uh, x square by a square plus y square by b square is the equation of an ellipse but for now you can just you know take my word for it <laughs> that this is the elliptical path uh, on further lcm we will get the equation 4x square plus 9y square is equal to 36 option a is going to be our right answer for this question okay so that's it for this session today uh, in the next session we'll be learning about slope of a straight line and equation of a straight line very important topics we'll be learning about that all about that in the next session till then this is your math teacher kundan mankar signing off tata bye bye have a great day everybody